Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Last week we took a look at traditional fusing and how to get it set up, how to make sure your fusing levels right, that sort of thing. And we ended up with the inevitable trip to the local auto parts store or to an online reseller to get some replacement fuses when things went a bit wrong. This week we're taking a look at e-fuses. So what is an e-fuse? Well, in its simplest form, it is a fuse that will automatically trip when it detects a current overload situation, i.e. you're pulling too many amps, so potentially something's gone wrong. And then once the problem is resolved, it will automatically reset and re-enable the output. So this is really good if you've got a controller up somewhere out of the way where it's difficult to get to but of course you do still have to go and remedy the fault. Now the most basic of these e-fuses is a thing called a polyfuse or a poly switch and these are seen in some of the genius boards such as this genius GR4 receiver. We can see that we've got four of these polyfuses here. They will trip as I said if there's too great a load in this case, these ones are rated at about four amps continuous. Um, probably push that to five, but much more than that, and these will trip. Fix the problem, and the fuse will, after a small period of time, reset and re-enable the output. So convenient. As I said, if these are put in a controller box up out of the way, uh, you don't need to get up there with a pair of pliers and pull the fuse these will just reset themselves. But they're, they're pretty basic. They just pop and then after a while, once the problem's gone, they will reset and away you go again. But now appearing now on some of the Culp and Falcon controllers, such as this, this Falcon receiver here, this is a, an SRX1 version five we can see that it has instead got these little chips on the side instead of fuses. And the same chips are used on some of the Culp boards now, such as this K8 Pi. We can see we've got eight of these little chips at the bottom. Now these are what's called a Power Mux chip, and they are a semi-intelligent uh, version of an e-fuse and altogether more interesting because they don't all only offer the fuse functionality, which of course they do, they will break the circuit if we get too many amps through it, but they offer additional functionality as well. So these can signal to the controller when they go into a fault state, i.e. they have shut down the power, they can tell the controller that this has happened. They can also tell the controller how many amps or milliamps are being pulled through each port at any time. So they've got a current sensor on there. So they're telling us a bit like the ammeter we used last week. They're telling the controller how many amps are running through each port. And they can also act as a switch so that when the controller is not being used, uh, if it's in idle and we're just working on the setup, then it can turn off the power to the pixels. And that can bring a lot of peace of mind and save on electricity as well. So when the show is not actually running, the controller can be up and you can be talking to it and, and programming it, pushing sequences to it, etc. But there's no power actually going to your pixels at that time. Now I've chosen the, the Culp to look at today because it's running FPP and it's got a nice easy user, in, user interface for us to demonstrate with. So let's dive in and look at the functionality of e-fuses on a Culp K8 Pi uh, version two. Now, if you're running FPP on a board that supports these additional features, then they will automatically become available in FPP for you. 
the, the hats here or the capes have a thing called an EEPROM which has some basic functionality of the board uh, on it. Once it's hooked up and set to the Pi, the Pi can then talk to the board and say, oh, you've got this sort of hat, I will configure myself appropriately. And that's the case with this K8 Pi. So the first thing that we're gonna notice in FPP is if we look at the status control menu, we see that we've got a new entry for current monitor. And if I go in here, it will detail what's happening on each of the available ports. So at the moment, we can see that they have all got blue crosses on them. And that means that the ports have been powered down. So there is no sequence playing currently. We're not testing or anything. So the ports are shut down. And looking at the ports themselves, we can see that the power lights, particularly along the bottom here where they're visible, are not illuminated. So we've got no power being sent to the ports at the current time. I can turn them on by simply clicking on the blue cross. And there we are, that's gone green. And if I look at this port here, we can see that the pixel has illuminated, sorry, the LED has illuminated to show us that there is put power available now on port number one. So we can turn the power on and off at will. There we go. So that's the first useful feature, the ability to turn power on and off to test things. Another useful feature is the current monitoring tool. Now that not only monitors the total amount of current going through, but with the aid of a helpful bit of software that's been written in FPP, it can actually be used to count the number of pixels. So if you start illuminating pixels in order from one through to however many, you will steadily see the current rise as each pixel is illuminated. And FPP can monitor that and it can see the current rising as the count is increased up to the point where you increase the count, but the current no longer increases because you've got to the end of the number of pixels on the string. And FPP can look at that and count the number of pixels. Now I've got a string of pixels here and I'm not 100% sure how many pixels I've got in this bundle. I've at some point lopped the start of them off and replaced them with a Phoenix plug, but I don't know how many there were here before I chopped this off and replaced it with a, the with a plug. So we can use FPP to count these and tell us how many are there. Now, the first thing that we do have to do is obviously I've got to plug them in and I can plug them in safely with no concern at all because I know there's no power on that plug at the moment. Uh, the LED is extinguished, and so I know I can just plug them in quite happily. The next thing we've got to do is that we've got to tell FPP a ballpark count um, that there are some pixels on this port, and then it will wake things up. So I'm going to go into Input Output Setup, Channel Outputs. I'm going to go to K8 Pi. And I'm just going to tell it for now that I've got 250 pixels on that port. Now I know there aren't that many in this bundle, but it will wake it up. And then just save. And restart FPPD. There it goes. Now I can go back to status and current monitor at this point. And I can then tell it to count pixels. And it will look at the ports that have got some pixels configured and it will try and count the number of pixels on that port. So there we do, it's running through some tests now as we can see. And there we go, it's worked out. There are 100 pixels in this string. 
with them all turned off, we're looking at about 225, 227 milliamps of power running through. And it has illuminated the very last pixel in the chain, which is correct because this one's got some JSTs hanging off the far end. So we can see that this is indeed the last pixel in the string, and that is pixel number 100. So that's really useful. So now I know how many are in this bundle, and I can use this bundle for pushing into my latest prop or whatever. Now I've also got a smaller set of pixels over here, and I know that this is a set of 50. Um, because I've still got both ends on it and it says it's a set of 50. So let's prove that. I'm going to put a pigtail on. There we go. And plug that in. Now it's into the same port and the, the port is actually still live. Uh, hence the little flash. But if I recount There we go, it's had a look and it knows that there are 50 pixels in this string. So we could then go back to the input output channel outputs and set our output correctly to 50 pixels. So there we go, we've used the current monitoring and we We've used that the count feature in current monitoring to count the number of pixels are on there. And that's all very good, but it's a bit of fun, isn't it, really? Now, the, the killer feature for me is that if something goes wrong on this channel and the fuse blows, FPP will tell me. And... I think that's an absolutely killer feature because I can then put this controller up in the eaves, out of the way, I don't have to look at it, and it's gonna tell me if something failed rather than me happening to be outside looking at a show and thinking, hang on, we're missing a bit up there, and then getting the ladders out and going to investigate. Obviously, I'm still gonna to have to go and investigate to fix it, but I know from the comfort of my sofa, looking at my phone or whatever, that it's going to tell me if something's gone wrong. To demonstrate that, we need to create a small sequence, get that running, and then we can demonstrate the fault. So I'm just going to do it in here first of all. I've got a Phoenix connector here with just a couple of wires sticking out, that one's positive, one's negative, that I can just touch together to short it out and cause a fault. So first up, I'm going to go to the current monitor tab and I'm just going to turn on port number one. There we go. And we can see that we've got an LED there. And if I short the port out, we can see that the port has been disabled automatically and we've got a red cross this time because it's been shut down by the system and the status has gone to a cross as well because there's a fault. So it's telling us, and this is really useful during testing, we can keep an eye on this page to make sure what is happening. Now, if I hover over the status light, that is telling me that the e-fuse has been triggered. And once I've cleared the fault, I can simply click on enabled and that will re-enable the port for me. So I haven't had to go to the auto parts store or to an online retailer, get a new fuse. I can simply click on the link and that will reset it for me. Now that's all well and good, but what happens if it fails during your show? You're not gonna keep this current monitor tab up whilst you're looking at the show. So let's demonstrate this with a short sequence. Now, as I look at the controller before I start the sequence, I can see that we've got power on on port one. So we're just gonna go and turn that off on the current monitor tab. Oh, I double clicked, there we go. That's gone and the LED has extinguished. So I can see that we've got no power there. 
And then as I go to play, FPP will see which ports are required to play this sequence and it will only enable the power outputs on the ports that are needed to run the sequence. And it's not actually going to do anything because I've only got these two bits of wire hanging off the port. But once that's happened, if a fault did occur, like I shorted it out, bam, we get an immediate warning on the front page of FPP that an e-fuse has triggered on port number one. So we know from the comfort of our armchair that a problem has occurred on the show and we need to go and fix it. We're not waiting for somebody to come and knock on the front door and say, Oi, half of your show's gone dark or you happen to be outside and you notice it. We've got a live active output to tell us that something has happened. So I think this is a great feature to have. Yes, it's only going to happen on the more premium controllers. Uh, these chips will typically cost around three or four dollars each. So if we said three dollars times eight of them on this board, that's 24 bucks before we've even considered the rest of the board. So there's definitely going to be a feature that happens on the premium controllers. But if you've got a controller out of the way where you can't get to it easily, or maybe it's even at a remote site and you're connecting to it over a VPN, you can see what's going on and it's giving you real time feedback. You've not got to wait for a customer to come along and say, why is half your show out? Or you happen to visit and you notice a bit's missing. It's gonna tell you, and that is a really good feature to have. So there we are, that's it for this week. I hope you found that useful. As always, do like, share, subscribe and all of that. And we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers for now.